the fight, I mean, I told everyone it was for the fans. We haven't had fans for three years. I thrive on listening to them, feeling the emotion, drawing from their energy. Like, I lost in the pandemic due to having no fans, Laura. I couldn't get up for the fights without them. And the walk-in, I got to come out to Jamie Webster, this place, because I knew the O2 was just going to be full of scousers. Mm. And when I made the walk, I seen so many famous faces and they was all there for us. And it was a bit surreal because I don't feel... <coughs> pardon me. I don't understand why they come sometimes. Will you stop the dog snoring for me? Sorry, the dog snoring. It's putting me on. <laughs> um, but when I walked into um, into the cage, I remember looking at Eddie Hearn and I was going, watch this. <laughs> because I like... I've been at the boxing events and I've told him how good I am and how much I'm loved. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, now, Eddie, watch this. And in the fight, I try a spinning back elbow and I try a spinning back kick. <coughs> Sorry. But from that moment, I knew when I'd slipped, I knew the shot was on. And um, it was just one of them. If you'd done it a thousand times, you could never land it. But mm -hmm. we had drilled it. Drilled it, drilled it, drilled it for years. For like, it's just we'd always done it, but at that one moment, it was just perfection. And I think I took the gas away from it. I'd attacked the belly, the, like I had non-stop punched the red and Laura for for two rounds. I'd like broke it. The crowd had broke it, and um, and it was just perfect. I, online, I was told she had a better strike and um. Arsenal than I did. She was more put together and her jiu-jitsu was better than mine. And I beat her up with all four limbs. I took her down, I beat her on the floor. And then I knocked her out with a Thai boxing like move, which is kind of here 101. So I'm still on cloud nine, me, Laura. Molly, tell me. I've watched it seven or eight times, man. And it gets better every time I see it. And listening to you there, you must have known immediately that that was a perfect shot. Tell me how you felt as soon as you landed the shot and then I'm watching your celebrations after it, man. They were they, they were just as good as your shot, man. They were magic. Thanks, Ali. Um, it was disbelief, you know, mate, because that was my eighth fight in the UFC and I hadn't had a finish. Now, prior to the UFC, I was just knocking people out for fun. But when you get into the UFC, the, the calibre of fight it, Everyone wants it, just that little bit more. So everyone's a world champion in a different division or promotion before they come to the UFC. So when you're fighting them, it really is the best of the best. And when I hit the shot, you can see it on my face. I just go, <gasps> like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe I'd done it because it was that, like, there's been four spin and elbow, elbow knockouts in the whole of MMA ever. And I'm the first woman to do it. And, <coughs> sorry, um, when I jumped out the cage, because we couldn't believe I'd done it, I'd literally just ran to Dana to jump on him, just to be like, mm -hmm. oh, that's the first time we'd really mm -hmm. had conversation. And the faces and the celebrities that were sat from, well, I just couldn't get over. So I was just like waving to them and all that, just having a little dance and just, pure relation and it wasn't until maybe like two minutes later I realised my opponent was still down and then that's when I went over I'm not sure if you've seen it yeah. but then it paid me respect I made sure she was okay but she was still out so they kind of just started the the, the post fight um, interview after she like because she was still out Molly I feel like that whole card was uh, one of the best I've watched in UFC for a long time and everyone watching at home was in awe of that knockout. Um, absolutely amazing. But I was wondering what Dana said to you after the fight, after when you spoke he, to him. Um, so I had a BT documentary released last week. Not sure if any of you have seen it, but on Thursday, they had a premiere at the BT Tower for me. And I met him there <clears throat> and I said to him, these hands... They're gonna they're gonna light the show up. I said I'm gonna steal the show on Saturday, boss. And um, he said, "Good, just don't be drinking any Guinness till then." <laughs> so on Saturday, when I ran to him, I said, "I told you I was gonna do it, lad. I told you I was gonna do it." <clears throat> he 
sorry, my voice is still in the O2. <laughs> and, um, and then he said to me, well, kids, you've just grabbed yourself a 50, 50 bag. You've got the, uh, the knockout bonus. And I was like, oh, my God. And then he said, and you, <clears throat> Dave from Barstool wants to sign you. So I'm sure everyone's aware of the lucrative sponsorship deal that Paddy the Baddy signed with them last year. Well, we're about to sign a similar deal <clears throat> for myself. So in that moment, I thought me and Patrick are literally going to change the face of the MMA game for Europeans and for British people and and make it more... It's so, like, equality runs through the whole way. Um, but, like, we're going to... We're going to change it to like maybe football money and, you know, like tennis money and make sure and boxing money and make sure that everyone's getting paid right and um, getting promoted well and making sure that loads of little kids are starting MMA. And I'm realising that, like, what's his name, Laura, that, that pundit that works on this show? Simon Jordan, is that? Is that Simon Jordan. About? So I had to, <laughs> I had to block Talk Sport on Fight Week and um, I blocked the Twitter and I blocked the Instagram because just the the, the words that he used and his, his uneducated approach to talking about a sport, I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, we don't do one Olympic sport, we do six. So imagine training for six Olympic disciplines and then having to go and do all the media we have to do and promote the show and... Oh, Molly, Simon's only, Simon's only Simon's only used to posh sports. Can't wait to see him. Well, j- don't worry. Wait to see him. I I hope he watched that and his mind. He truly changes his opinion. On Molly, if you get the tra- if you get the train now, you'd make it here in time to meet him at the studio. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm just going to get an Uber. I won't even get a train. I'll get an Uber down now. And he's getting a Chinese bean. <laughs> there, there, will, there will be some listeners that um, haven't heard what he said. And um, we've got you covered. This is it. This is what Simon Jordan had to say about the UFC shortly before Molly's fight last week. I always liked boxing and I didn't like UFC. Yes. And when I went to watch UFC, what I found I didn't like about it, I didn't like the audience. I felt the audience behaved in a certain way, which is almost like some sort of, some sort of gladiatorial killing yeah. sort of mentality and I didn't like the sport now over the years Adam Catchell who is a boxing correspondent here speaks so highly about it and obviously I've seen the generation of, of Dana White's coming through and monetizing it but I'm always challenged about the brutality mm. you know I know that we sit here and we want to see someone getting knocked out in boxing yep but it's something that's so to the to almost for want of an expression to the knuckle with UFC that I can't get my head into I don't like it. It makes me wince. I had a, I had a cousin who was a professional kickboxer, so I looked at the side of things and, that, and had an open mind to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. There you go, Miles. So that's what... <laughs> that's what <laughs> can I just say... Can, can I just say, though, <clears throat> the demographic that watched me and Patrick, there was five, six, seven-year-olds there watching. There was nan and granddads there. The crowd's not one kick-off. No disrespect, I'm a boxer by trade, so I'm not like I'm not pointing the fingers at my crowds who I would go and watch because I go to the boxing all the time. But there's normally a rowdy one at the end, isn't there? When we go to the boxing, granted, there wasn't that. And I thought this man has no clue what he's speaking about. And I, re- <clears throat> I understand he's talking about brutal knockouts, so he's probably not going to like mine. But if you just watch that whole event from start to finish, it. You could just see the pride in everyone in the crowd and how proud he was. It was like, it was literally like, I feel like, was it the Sat- Saturday Night Main you at the 2012 London <laughs> Games when we won the gold rush? That's what it felt like because GB, MMA, the Brit, like the Welsh, the Scottish, the English, we had all done it. We all done it that night and we all got a finish. And we, I, I just think that was the night where everyone will remember where you was. That was a piece of history when you'll go, that's when MMA changed in Great Britain. Mm. Michael Bisping was on with him, actually, and uh, it was quite a good oh, back and forth. Oh, he scored him, Laura. <laughs> Up the Bisping. <laughs> it was it was good and for those that missed it one one thing that he did say was in comparison between UFC looking more brutal than boxing he was actually saying look in in UFC the fight is called a lot sooner than it ever is in boxing is that right in your opinion yeah of course like like he says doesn't he in boxing you can take a knee you can pop back up you can fight again and you're concussed at that moment so 
you're taking more damage again and again and again. Um, in MMA, if you can't intelligently defend yourself, the ref will jump in himself. Like the second, but even when I knocked her out, you see, I would have attempted to go again because you can't stop until the referee stops it. But he seen she was out and pushed me straight away. Now, don't get me wrong, there's really good referees in boxing still. Like when Terry Harper got knocked out on mm. the feet and the ref knew straight away, jumped in. Um, but the, I don't know, you've got, you've got more targets. There's so much more areas to hit. You can kick the legs constantly. You can kick the belly. You can punch the belly. You can take down. You can look for submissions. You're not looking for the head, really, apart from I am. That's what I do when I fight. I'm a bit of a head hunter, but <laughs> what a show. What a show. Yeah. Molly as well. I know it, I know he's special to you, you and Paddy. Um, you've been speaking about him all morning. And um, the two of you and, and just what you represent for Liverpool and the relationship you have, I think is it's so easy for people to warm to you and to get on board. Um, for both of you to win that night, not just the Brits, but especially for you two, that must have just been so special for you to enjoy together. Again, yeah, I mean, he's headlined the Echo Arena and I opened the show before and I've headla- headlined the Echo Arena and he's opened the show and then we shared that moment in Vegas and then we had that moment again. And we're just two kids who are kind of crossing communities, as in I'm obviously an Evertonian. Mm-hmm. He's a Liverpool fan, two socialists, two left-wing, two fighting for... Um, the, the kids of the city and um, to to go out there and basically say we're going to shake up the world, we're going to change the face. He says a little bit more, we're going to change the face of MMA, but I say we're going to shake up the world, like we're going to let people know that we come as a package and we come as we represent our city through and through and we're trying to put a positive spin on where we're from and um, some people might not like that just down to the fact of where we're from and some people might not like the fact that we're saying what we want to do but it just it is what it is it's not a narcissist thing it's not narcissism it's not about the ego it's just about pride and just trying to make sure that everyone's winning yeah and we can't believe it like literally well he can believe it I'm in disbelief still because I just my life has literally changed in one second, mm-hmm. but he he always knew. And have you seen have you seen his reaction when I knocked the girl out, Laura? It's amazing. Have you isn't seen it? it? It's amazing. And then I literally was doing the media post fight, and I was going, "I'm really sorry, I can't do anymore. I need to go and watch Patrick." <laughs> so Renee, who's Dana's PA, PA, I said, "Can you ask him if I can come and watch him because you're never allowed back into the arena," and he said, "She can have my seat." Oh. So. I was literally sat in Dana's seat and he's given me a bottle of Howl Heads, which is his whiskey. And I was literally like just shot mid next to Kate <laughs> side. And then Eddie Hearn was just like, Mo, what about that elbow? And I was like, I know, I know. And then um, I had big face, Fraser Clark asking for pictures and all like Derek Tesora and Auntie Joshua and all <laughs> that. And I was like, what is going on here? Well, you've and done then all that, just walked. You've, you've done then, all that. That's all you. I know, but you just don't ever think it. Do you know when you're just dead normal, Laura? <laughs> you, you just don't think yeah. it. And, and then when he won, we just jump scaled the fence and was like doing laps of honours together because that was like when McGregor won his world title or brought the UFC to Dublin. It was literally that moment again. Listen, our phone lines are going mad for you, Molly. Uh, she's a living legend. Molly the Meatball travelled to um, from Oban to the O2 to watch the UFC on Saturday. Best atmosphere ever, still buzzing. That's from Derek. Um, people absolutely love you and yeah. everything that you've done and everything you continue to do for the sport as well, Molly. We think you're brilliant. Please come back on any time, especially if you're going to hammer Simon Jordan like that. I think <laughs> well, we really enjoyed I reckon that. we should do a charity <laughs> boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, we love, we love UFC. UFC's got a lot of fans. Don't listen to to Simon, okay, keep keep going. Yeah, I won't. Fa- can I just say thank you to you guys for giving us um, another outlet to talk about yeah. what we do without um, caveman mentality? <laughs> um, we just all sit there 
having scotch and a cigar <laughs> watching the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're brilliant. brilliant. I love you, Molly. I'll see you in New York. Hey, Molly, I'll see you in New York. See you there. Can't wait for that. You're Good brilliant. Luck. Bye, Good Molly. Luck. See Good you luck. later. Good Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.